Mr. Benjamin, whenever you are available, the mic is open.
फीस कुछ टेलीफोन सेल फोन ऑन साइलेंस और न्यूज एट रिस्पेक्ट द हाउस ऑफ द लॉ एमेन एट दिस टाइम आई एम गोइंग टू ओपन द फ्लोर फॉर ट्रीब्यूट इफ यू वुड लाइक टू गिव एनी ट्रीब्यूट प्लीज कम फॉरवर्ड नाउ at 5 minutes to 2 we will close the casket and start the official program again i invite anyone at this time to give tribute thank you
So was none other than Johnette. And so again, I invite you to come forward and give a tribute if you would like to. We only have a few more minutes before the official start of the program. So if you're moved to give a tribute, please let me know. Come forward. Thank you very much, my dear friend and schoolmate. And a very good friend of the late Janet. Thank you, Vivian. And I'm going to say Vivian Mills. So you know I know a lot of that. You said that for the whole world. <laughs> Lady Mills Diamond. Good afternoon, Tom. In our culture, we say, our spirit takes somebody. That was Janet to me. For some reason, we just had this kind of connection. And I remember when she went in for the Queen show um, at Simmons, she actually chose me as the person who she represented. And so we always had that good connection. And, you know, it's really difficult. This still feel as if, you know, has it really happened? Can this be reversed? But I wrote a poem as a tribute to Janet because just something to capture her spirit. Tribute to Janet. The cadence of her life so abruptly disrupted. We all know she was far too young. Now we are here to pay our final respect in poetry and speeches and song. An excellent dancer, so graceful, so fluid. Her poignancy, her pride, her passion exalted the art form, enchanted her audience. She truly was poetry in motion. A charming young lady, so friendly, so happy. What exuberance for life she imbued. She lived the life to the fullest, enjoyed every moment, now that vibrant city lights are subdued. Her soul is now caged by bars of bones. The essence of her spirit all gone. But though the body now lies cold, her cherished memories live on. We question God, 
We ask for what purpose in the prime of her youth she should die. Just snatched from our bosom, bosom we are crushed and have broken. But only the good Lord knows why. So sleep on, sweet Janet. Rest in peace, my dear. Our earthly connection is broken. Today we shed tears. Today we say goodbye. And pray that we see you in heaven. We have so rest in eternity.
final viewing now is for the family members. So I would like all the siblings of the late Janet Williams, her parents, her aunts, her cousins, to please make way now because the coffin will soon be closed. I understand that there is a group who would like to do a tribute. Please come now because after that, that is it.
most gracious God. We turn to now the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength that we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of one who we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness. Assure us, O Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that our fear and bitterness will be swallowed with the light and peace to give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers, sisters, allow me to acknowledge among us, present, and the viewing, the Honorable Sean K. Richards, Father and Director, for his constituency, as the CEO of Education, Francis Morris. Others, dignitaries, clergy scattered throughout, family members. Family friends, fellow mourners. The reason why we're here met in this solemn moment is to commend Jonet Alida Williams into the hands of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone yes. we have salvation. Let us now recall to mind the life of our dear deceased sister, and in humble trust we hear the words of Holy Scripture. The following persons will come to pay tribute, the TDC Group of Companies, Charles E. Mills Secondary School, the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College, the Harrow Silver Controls Company, and then the Emmanuel and this check. So we come in that order.
Good afternoon. On behalf of the staff and students of the Charles Indian Secondary School, we would like to take this opportunity to extend our warmest and heartfelt condolences to the Williams family. Johnette attended the Sunday Point of the Charles Indian Secondary School, who has left many, many memories at the school. She was involved in different activities, the cheerleading group, the dance group. She also entered or represented the school in the Queen Show. Also, we have Janiqua Williams, who is a student of the second form. And this afternoon, we have a representative from the second form block who will be doing a rendition in song, Lean on Me.
where you should be able to be in terms of her speech and also her interview. And uh, when she came, I asked her, I said, who are your relatives? And she said, huh? I said, who are your relatives? She said, what do you mean? I said, you belong to me. And she said, my mother name Cox and my father name John. And I said, oh, okay. And it is from there we develop a relationship. A relationship that had deep roots in the sense that she would be on a bus and I would only hear my name. Or sometimes I would hear my name and I would be looking around, the bus would disappear and then she would say, I was calling you the other day and you didn't answer me. And you know, you had to apologize. She was the kind of person who, she never got mad, no matter what was said to her. There were times when I would say to her, you know, she liked fashion. She would come to school outside the uniform and I would say to her, Janet, you want to call your mother and your father. She said, okay, come on, we're going to come back to that. And she was the kind of person that you could see that she had potential, she was willing, she understood the rules, she understood what was necessary and how far she could go. She was one of the persons that you admired, especially when she did her hair in particular. She liked the idea of having a well groomed head of hair. And if you look at the picture on the leaflet, you would see what I meant by that. Um, Janet came to the Clarence Peace Boy Bryant College in 2020 and she entered the Division of Art, Sciences and General Studies. And it is there that her mother took a keen interest in her education. Her mother would call, she would ask, she would say, um, how is Janet doing if I went to the water department? She would also ask about her. And if I said that, I remember once I said to her, it's registration time and I have not seen Janet. And within the hour when I returned to college, Janet was there, present, paying her fees and checking her registration. And it is very difficult when you lose a young person, especially someone who has great potential, and I saw that in Janet. And it is very difficult when you come to know a young person and you like the spirit of the young person and you hear that the person is sick and you say to the parent, well I will see her when she gets well and then you get to call and it is this thing that she has died. It is not something that we as parents that we like or we would want or we want to bury our children, but it is our reality. And for me, it is a very difficult situation knowing that I said to the mother about a month ago, I will keep her registration and when she's feeling well, she can come and register. Unfortunately, that was not to be. It is with heartfelt regret that we're here today. Janet joined us in 2020 at CFPC Business Program. The sudden passing of Janet affects the CFPC community, and I know that all of us send our deepest expression of sympathy to Janet's parents, family, and friends. May we all pause for a moment for the precious to thank God for the life of Janet, and to remember her precious memories. This has indeed been a great sadness for all, but passing reminds us of how precious and sometimes fleeting life can be. It, is also, it also reminds us of the importance of reaching out to one another to offer strength and support and to seek help when needed. On behalf of the CFPC Board of Governors, Administration, Faculty and Staff, as well as the student population, I express our the uh, deepest condolences to the family and friends who have been affected by her sudden passing. Janet was a queen and we wish her all the best in the arms of St. Peter. Um, a student will now render a song. Thank you.
prepared out from church. I don't know.
We like and our condolences to the Valencia family. Uh, we are here to support um, Valencia, our sister, she's a part of us. This time we would like to watch the song. Thank you.
She was not given all these gifts and talents out of generosity. God had a purpose. But my friend, he was not about to share her with anyone or anything. He is a jealous God. And so he took her back. She was baptized an Anglican, but for many years was part of this Methodist family, frequently coming to worship with her aunt. We thank God for allowing us to experience the love and joy she shared. We are even more confident that we were able to teach her about God and His love for us. As a result, in the final hours, she had something to hold on to. And so, in less than 10 hours of life left, she prayed and read her Bible. She has gone back to her week. And so, on behalf of our minister and members, and more so our music ministry, that hosts Emmanuel Lipsa and annual occurrences to all people. Queen Janet entered this competition five times, and she won two times. In her soul rest. Calisonians past and present will now win the day. Oh, mm -hmm. 
is beyond so much good she had to offer but for Good afternoon to everyone. The formal Reverend Group the formal remembrance uh, celebration of the life for Janetta Williams was written by myself, Teresa Williams Wyatt, and Mrs. Asha Jones Woodley. Janetta Alena Williams was born Williams and Lawrence John Deming Lasco on the 27th of August 2002. Janetta had many positive attributes, attributes but we must make mention of her infectious love for food and her big, beautiful smile. As you are aware, Janetta made several public appearances to celebrate our culture, and never once her coaches had to say smile. Her smile was a natural element of her well-being. Janetta finished Sam's with distinction and went on to CFBC College. She remained a Warren Tyson Memorial Scholarship student until her demise. Let me pause to extend heartfelt gratitude to the Chairman, Board of Directors, Management and Staff of the TTC Group of Companies for their tremendous support to the family. Thank you. Janetta had such a simple but impactful life. 
She touched so many persons, it's difficult to continue. However, this is my truth. Tessa, you come in for me today? Or Tessa, you done gone? Those were the two of the show questions I knew I would receive each and every Sunday from Janetta as we retreat to our usual spot of belief from the troubles of this world, unchained, which was how my name would look. Netta was the life of the party once we got there. Some of the earliest memories of Netta include us being at practice, laughing, singing, and then we, when we're done, we go looking for food, our favorite. Sometimes we don't have enough money, but we'll all come together and make sure everyone has something to eat. One thing we all loved about Netta was her calm spirit. When I'm faced with challenges and unable to cope, Netta would simply remind me that all I need to do is relax and find solutions. She would never encourage me to remain in anger and despair. This is especially so when I'm working on a project. I would call Netta 100 times and ask Netta, you sure? You sure this will work? You sure I can handle this? I mean, don't ask me how this is possible with such a huge difference in age. But I found much comfort in her words and encouragement. I found it refreshing that sometimes someone much younger than I am is able to guide me. I believe this is why I loved her so much. Another thing I loved about Netta is her willingness to always help. Again, when challenges arise and require additional support, I can always rely on Netta. She will never say no. She will never grumble. Once she's able to help, she will help. In Unchained, she displayed excellent leadership qualities. I was able to put Netta to lead on certain projects, and she will always deliver. I felt at peace knowing that Netta is there. However, as much as I was, as much as she was the life of the party, I always knew when something was bothering her. I would observe her extreme quietness and carefully craft my approach to getting her to talk to me about it. She had this way of asking how I knew when something was bothering her. And I would simply tell her I pay keen attention to persons around me, especially those who contribute to me to motivating me and giving me strength. We would have had to have conversations about our challenges and how best we think they can be resolved. Sadly, the conversation that I was not prepared for was a message about her first days of hospitalization. I would message her almost every hour, giving her tips of how to take care of herself while in the hospital. I would tell her to ask for lots of black tea and drink it hot. It will help to remove the mucus. Keep your inhaler close to you. Wear your socks to keep your feet warm. I waited to hear when she was leaving the hospital and that message eventually came. So I went back in my comfort zone, knowing that she was out and doing well. Then here comes that Sunday message. Tessa, you done gone? No. Why? You want to come with us today? Yes, I want to. I just want to bear one of you guys. I said, okay, no problem. I'm coming for you. When I got there and I saw her, she did not look like mine at all. I started to cry inside as I was trying to hide it from her. Immediately, I started to put down prayers in my head, asking God to heal her. Okay, occasionally, while I practice and without shine my tears, I would ask, I would ask her every second if she's okay. Yes, Tessa, I am fine, she said. I will get better, stop worrying. I felt comforted again and I started to relax. I checked upon her every day. Then our final Sunday message was not the usual, Tessa, you're coming for me. It was, Tessa, I'm back in the hospital again. I said, Lord Jesus, take me real. Netta is going through too much, too much. I said, Netta, please take care of yourself. She said, I am. I said, I will not want you to catch yourself again. She said, same. Again, I fell back into my uneasy mood. Then that fatal call came in the early morning. I broke down. I lost my mom when I was only six, but this felt different. I felt broken. I love Netta so much, really love her. 
She truly had a gift to connect to people, understand them, make them feel special, and let them matter. I believe this gift from all family who are hard, genuine, lovely people. Netta came into our lives briefly, laughed with us, cried with us, danced with us, made us smile, made us feel special, and then left as quickly as she arrived. Maybe that was her purpose here, to have a positive impact on all of us, by leaving us better than she found us. I suppose death is what makes life beautiful, knowing that over time here is finite, to make the most of it and remember what is important. Some birds simply aren't meant for this world. Their feathers are too bright. That's how we'll always remember later and God calling him to build the angels. This section of the remembrance was written by Miss Astro Jones Lily. Janetta, you always seem to amaze me with your loving and caring heart. It seems like yesterday you were preparing for the National Talented Team Show. I never experienced any challenges with you during practice sessions. You exerted more effort than I asked. We enjoyed a mother and daughter bond. It was always Mrs. Jones who would lead no matter the situation. Her mother, Alexis, quotes, would direct everyone to teacher Mrs. Jones Woodley for answers to questions about the shows and school. Janetta and Makita were captain and vice captain of the Chilean squad. Together they did sense power. Janetta liked to be like, like to go to Basti on school outings with Mrs. Jones Woodley, even when she was unwell. I must share this remembrance with you. On one occasion, when she was unwell, she insisted that she was coming to Bassey with me on one condition, that she would be fed. Her favorite words, Joan C, I'm hungry, I'm interested in about dancing, feed me first. She would go through my bag to hunt for snack, to hunt for snacks. If I took too long to feed her, her catchphrase was, what belongs to your children belongs to me too, because I'm your child also. Janetta was a talented dancer. She danced for the Emmanuel Methodist Church and says, She was skilled at sewing and promised me that one day she would showcase her sewing skills with Karen Matthew and make wedding and pageant dresses. She was beautiful, brilliant, never afraid to speak in the public. Most of all, she was able to speak to God before taking her last breath. Cooks and John have lost a daughter, but heaven has been an angel. Janetta, you will remain in our hearts forever. May your soul rest in eternal peace and rise in glory. Thank you. We invite your sister, Nico, to read the but she's unable to do so. So I'll do it on behalf of the family. So this poem is for Netta from Lunki. To my sister, I'm blessed to call you my sister. <coughs> I also call you my friend. You've loved me unconditionally and stood by me thick and Thin. You've shared my joys and sorrows, my laughter and my tears. You've always been my inspiration as we grew up through the years. My dear sister, if only I could rewind and spend those last memories once more. I would give my all just for me to hear you laugh and see your smile one final time. You are the one to comfort me through the good and stormy and being your bestie. TikTok partner and mini you has always been my pleasure. Although I'm sad without you and wish that you were here, within my heart your lovely smile still shines bright and clear. Oh, you left me with the memories 
and moments that we've shared, even though we fought sometimes, love was always there. I couldn't imagine losing you and hearing the news made my eyes immediately fill up with tears. Your sudden pass broke me into two, but I'm staying strong just for you. Yuki, you heard the words that you wrote? Are you staying strong? I know you're still with me, maybe not physically, but spiritually I do know that you will continue to guide and protect me as the days pass. My dear sweet sister, your family and friends wish you could have stayed with us, but sadly, heaven required you. I know I cannot bring you back, although I wish I really could, but peace of me went with you the day you left us. So, continue to rest in perfect and eternal peace, my favorite sister, and I know I will forever and always love you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Debbie, for filling in the job for Jenny. Brothers and sisters, we will we will show ourselves in the words of Psalm 16. We will read Paul alternately. It's on page 2 in our conference. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. You have made me know the to you to me the path of life. You will fill me with your joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And remain seated as we sing the offertory hymn. I heard an old, old story of a Savior King.
the career that is in the climate creators. It seems old to some, but forever new to others. We find our story in your story. Realize that all along we are part of a story. A story you can't to write in your words. We come this afternoon to celebrate a life who was part of that story while she was alive. But she heard about a mansion that you had built for her in the way. So we stay here recognizing that the story doesn't end at death. Continues on for those who give me. We give God now a portion of what you have blessed us with as we seek to spread the good news that you are alive in Jesus Christ. We are thankful for that life. And we give him thankfulness and give him praise that you might bless us even as we bless the child. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated and be in the white Leslie Deming, the cousin. So he doesn't have to come to this Do not let them be afraid. The gospel of Christ. 
congregation here at Emmanuel Methodist Church and the wider circuit of people called Methodists. As you have heard, our late sister Janet did an integral part in this congregation as she grew up within it and we were grateful for the opportunity to nurture a young life and allow to have the wings that she may fly. It's never easy to say goodbye to one so young and so I know that I, I don't do this too often and I pray that I don't bury young people too often either. It's always a difficult thing. So let's go through it together, shall we? So that we shall bear each other up as we say our final is so amazing. I begin with a quote from Lola Lawrence. It says, in the quiet, I miss you most. When my mind has a chance to wonder and my heart has a moment to remember. Let me say that again. It's in the quiet that I miss you most. When my mind has the chance to wonder and my heart has a moment to remember. As I reflected upon this quote, as it comes from Lola Lawrence, as posted in LinkedIn on Cruz Bereavement Council, I pulled out three things. One is that perhaps this realization comes because we are busy people. We are people who are always on the go, having somewhere to go, somebody to meet. And so we sometimes thrive on busyness, never having the chance to slow down. And they would say, smell the coffee. In our business, we find that we can crowd our thoughts of loved ones. Sometimes it's a conscious thing that we busy ourselves so that we do not have the chance to think of the person who has happened. Sometimes it's unconscious or in our subconscious <coughs> that we busy ourselves that we do not have to think about such a person. Death rattles us if truth be told, especially when it is sudden or the person is gone. That's the case where we are concerned. While some knew of her illness, some did not. It came as a shock to hear that Netta, Jonet, was gone. How could a young soul lived so short and gone just like that, a candle snuffled in the wind. The questions then rise. The hearts are now beginning to get troubled by the news and we're not sure what to make of it. And so sometimes we busy ourselves. I know some persons when searching on social media just to make sure that the news was right. Just to see if they could catch a glimpse of the face to see if they remember who she was. If they knew some family member or some friend to ask questions. And truth be told, some of us went to the news. But we were busy scrolling through. So that we don't have to slow down. When death rattles you and me, it causes our hearts to be troubled, overwhelmed. And so we find ourselves occupied, constant, 
And so I believe this realization, it is in the choir that I miss the most, comes out of that. There is this restlessness that is ours as human beings, and death only makes it sometimes worse. I also believe, as I ponder upon this quotation, that the realization may vary from in time frame. That some persons come to realize that they miss people most in the quiet after years of busyness or perhaps months or perhaps weeks. But whatever time frame it does take, it is to come to that point that I must slow down at some point and stop the busyness and allow my God to have his way. And third, I believe that the realization may come as a result of an encounter with the divine. In our troubled state of mind, in the business of our lives, trying to grapple with losses and all that life offers to us, God's light shines into our darkness. It shines in the darkness of pain and grief, of sin and shame, of whatever it is that keeps us there, and it comes like the dawning of a new day. And then we realize that God was always with us. And many days that we were too busy to realize that God is always with us. So the disciples then hear the news of Jesus is pending death, his departure, and their hearts are troubled. And Jesus says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And when the questions began to rise, their minds are going nine miles or a hundred miles per hour, and they ask the question, well, where are you going and how do we know how to get where you are going? And the divine answers, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It dawns upon them, a light shining in their darkness. It then means, with that realization that I miss this person in the quiet moments, in realizing that the divine is always with us, willing to shine in our darkness, it brings us a peace. A peace that passes all understanding. A peace that only God in Christ can give. And so he tells his disciples as he tells us, my peace I give to you. I'm gifting it to you. Not as the world gives. But I'm giving it to you that you would not allow your hearts to be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Well, we know from experience and we are going through it now. Boy, some of us can say, boy, this is good to have a But right now, all them words can bring back to it. She has done. Lived her life. As I said to her mother, she did not die. She lived. No matter how short her life was, she lived her life. When all the business is done and we sit down now in the quiet, when everybody has gone about their normal business and the calls become less, the person's not inquiring as often as they were doing, you find yourself sitting in the quiet of your home or wherever you find that quiet place and we find the sitting quiet can be unsettled. It can be unnerving. That's why we're busy of ourselves. I remember when I was in school, one of our teachers used to say, Why oh, you all young people can't sit quiet? 
for five minutes. <coughs> Sit quiet for five minutes like a suffocator. And we sit in church as well. We ask for a moment of silence and somebody starts to, to cough or the musician starts to play. But the moment of silence is because it becomes unsettling. We want to hear something. We want to please the other side. But we find that when we sit in quiet, it helps us to become attuned to the voice of God. Of God's ways and God's truth in Jesus Christ. And we hear again that we are His and He is ours. We hear again the assurance that the Lord is my shepherd and so I shall not be in one. I hear again that despite all of my wanderings and my waywardness, there is a God who loves me and comforts me. Rather busy myself. I just know I can sit there and be held. I sit in the quiet then with all my thoughts running through my head and my emotions running high. Wanting to scream and scream, I do. Tears running down my eyes. I know that in this quiet moment, disturbed by my noise, there is a God who sits with me. Not only then that I become attuned to the voice of God, His ways, His truth, I become more aware of the needs of others. So I recognize that life is not about me. It's about God and it's about others. So I sit in quiet and I listen. And I hear the voice of God above it all. And then he turns my attention that there is somebody who needs to hear the word. Who needs a helping hand. I like the Jewish Shiva. As evidenced in Job. Job is going through much. His heart is troubled. He sits in sackcloth and ashes as he mourns. But as he listens in quiet. His friends come and sit with him. And they say. They just simply sat there. It is what they call the sitting Shiva. And they sit for seven days, saying nothing. It is part of the grieving process. Whatever you want to say, you say, or whatever you feel, you feel. But they just sit with you to let you know that somebody's here with you. But the problem came at the end. They opened their mouths and they got to talk. And things went down there from there. They tried to explain what was happening. Yeah, be careful what you say when people are reading. If nothing can be said, then say nothing. All you require is a ministry of presence. And the person knows that you are there and you are keeping them in prayer. You're with me. So we close. You have journeyed with me. I thank you very much. You sat in quiet. And then you will open your mouth. And we will confirm our faith in the words of the apostles. We will sing to the honor and glory of God, having heard from him. We assure ourselves, yes, there is a place of quiet. That's what the songwriter tells us. There is a place of quiet rest. And where does he say? Near to the heart of God. It's in that quiet place. Remember we said it? It's in that quiet place that you will miss Johnet most. It is when you slow down and the busyness is over. We will say that at the end. 
When the fever of life is over, when your mind has the chance to wonder and your heart has a moment to remember, there you will find God. There you will find the memories of Jonet now deceased. And there you will find yourself. May her soul rest in peace. Amen. Let us stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers, and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of John and Tomb into the day to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and blessing her life has brought to others, for her service to a generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness, which have followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her dear perfect kingdom, and bring us with all of lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We hear the words of commendation. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we now commend our sister Janetta Lena to your perfect mercy and wisdom, eternal rest grant unto her, and let perpetual life shine upon her. We chant now to the Lord's name.
receive the benediction. Now the God of peace is brought again from the dead of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which will be pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our session of him, our great God. Yeah. 